For this project, we're going to map the location of recent earthquakes around the globe, and we're also gonna add a layer identifying tectonic plate boundaries, and we're gonna see if the location of the earthquakes matches those boundary locations. So first of all, we're gonna add a layer, and we need to find earthquakes. So I'm gonna click Add, Browse Living Atlas Layers, and in here, I'm gonna search Earthquake. And we come up with this layer, Recent Earthquakes by Esri. So let's click on that and have a look at the details. And if we look through the details for this map, it's gonna give us uh, earthquakes in the last 30 days of a reasonable magnitude. So I'm gonna to click to add that to my map. All right, and there was an earthquake recently here in Melbourne. So if we just go and zoom in on that part of the world, drag the map across. Let's click on this one and you can click zoom to. So we can see here it's tagged this earthquake uh, in Victoria near Melbourne. If you click on the yellow dot in the middle for the earthquake, it gives you details about it. So the magnitude, the depth of the earthquake, the date and time, and its location as well. Also, if there were tsunami warnings and a warning color. But more than that, you can click on these different zones uh, around the earthquake. Um, and it gives you Macaulay intensity scale levels for those different zones. So we can see in this outer zone, it was a four, but right close to the middle, um, it got up to a six or even a seven if we zoom in a little bit further there. Um, so we can actually see how far away that was felt. Some people in Canberra said they did feel a small amount of shaking, so that's pretty interesting. If we zoom out, we actually see where similar earthquakes have been right across the globe. So we can see a whole bunch there. And it's interesting, if we look at their location, um, it's on what's known as the Ring of Fire, the boundary of a tectonic plate right through the Pacific Ocean here. So just to confirm that, what we can actually do, we can go and grab another layer that has tectonic boundaries on it, and we can add that to our map. So if we click on Add again, um, Browse Living Atlas, I'm actually gonna click the drop-down menu now I'm here, and go down to ArcGIS Online. This time I'm gonna put in tectonic plates. If we enter, we can see here we get tectonic plate boundaries by Esri Training Services. So that's a reliable source. If we click Add to Map. Okay, let's go back here. We can now see that we've added in our tectonic plate boundaries to our map, and we can definitely notice that a lot of the earthquakes occur directly along those tectonic plate boundaries. So that's a wonderful, simple way to use ArcGIS uh, to map earthquakes and tectonic plates, just with two layers added to a base map there. Also lets us see that that earthquake that occurred near Melbourne in Australia wasn't anywhere near the boundary of a tectonic plate, which makes it all the more interesting. There are a few other things you can get out of these um, layers. The earthquake has two layers that got inserted there, magnitude and shake intensity. If you click on this little icon for a layer, it actually brings up a legend. So we can see here any earthquake under magnitude three, it's just a little gray dot. So there's a lot of them along uh, the west coast of America and into Alaska. And you can see the real big ones have a big black dot. So at the moment, we've got one all the way down here and we've got one up here in Alaska. So we could even go to zoom into that. Let's zoom to that. And we should be able to get a bit closer to some of these black earthquakes, the black dots. There we go. So 8.2 magnitude uh, near Alaska, uh, 46 kilometers deep, etc. So that's just the legend key right there. One other feature I will show you, you can click on this table um, icon for that layer and it actually brings up all the data that's stored in that layer. So we can see here, it lists recent earthquakes, gives magnitude, uh, an alert level, the precise location, how many hours old it is, uh, plus the event date and time, and it also gives you links to more details about those specific earthquakes. So that's pretty fantastic level of detail there. All right, so that's one excellent way you can use ArcGIS maps with a couple of layers to more accurately look at earthquakes.